in the last class we discussed regarding the pediatric assessment triangle so as soon as the child has come we have done the initial impression mm -hmm. and from the initial impression we have done the uh, appearance of the child work of breathing of the child and we have gone to the color of the child and from that we have come to a conclusion whether the child is sick looking child or whether the child is stable enough and whether there is an it's a problem with the circulation or whether it's a problem with the airway or breathing so that is what we have come to that now after doing this we have to go to something called as primary assessment so that is the next step so primary assessment is basically you have going for a detailed assessment of your airway breathing circulation disability and exposure of the child so we are going to the complete a b c d e approach of a child so when you get a child like this you have done your pat assessment and you have a sick child okay you have a sick child or you find that there is a problem in a b or c what you have to immediately do three things that you need to remember one is connect to a monitor so that is the first thing connect to a cardiac monitor and other vital parameters connect to cardiac monitor and other monitors that is one thing that you have to mandately remember and second thing look for oxygenation what is the present spo2 from this and o2 you need to start so that is the next thing that you need to keep in mind so you should not forget these things you have to connect to cardiac monitor or you have to connect to the uh, saturation pro blood pressure monitors vital monitors and third thing is an whether the child required an iv or an iu access so these are the certain things that you have to remember that when you have a stable child well and good you have time but you have an unstable child you think that this child is having a sick looking appearance so we have to immediately do these things so that part you need to keep in your mind connecting to the monitors connecting to the cardiac monitors and getting the vitals see when we do a b c d we are telling that we look for the airway we look for the breathing we do everything simultaneously it is not one after the other for teaching purpose we are telling it is one after the other but we does everything simultaneously when a patient comes we immediately connect to the monitor and all the vitals are taken care of so that is how the usually the scenario works it is not like one thing after that i will take care of a i will take care of b that is not like that way we manage for teaching purpose we have made it a b c d e like this in the vertical pattern but usually we does a horizontal approach and we will go ahead and uh, analyze the patient accordingly like that so that is the things that you need to clear so now what are things that you need to understand uh, in an airway so what do, what do you want to assess in a you have to most important thing what is here to whether the airway is clear whether the airway is patent and whether the airway is maintainable at this point of time whether i am able to maintain the airway so these are the things that you have to answer whether the airway is clear patent and maintainable so clear and patent almost you can use it as synonyms but you have to understand that whether the airway is patent whether the airway is clear patent and clear and at present whether the airway is maintainable if no what you need to do what you need to do so what you need to do you need to do a suctioning at this point of time maybe a simple head tilt and a chin lift maneuver is enough so all those things that you need to keep in your mind so our primary assessment you have to make sure that the airway is open clear and maintainable so that is the most important thing that you need to clear so that is what it is written here airway and appearance you have to make sure that there is clear and maintainable and the child should be alert what is avpu scoring that i will tell you you know already what is avpu scoring so depending upon the child's mental status we can divide a child into four categories one the child is alert v is verbal response child is responding to your verbal commands and p is for only for painful response and u is for unresponsive victim so for an unresponsive painful these two things airway is definitely not maintaining at that point of time but for an alert patient definitely the airway is maintained and it is made clear because the child is able to talk and give you a similar lean v status also so that is what you need to make sure that the airway whether it is open clear and whether it is maintainable and what is the mental status of the child during that time if the mental status of the child is u that means the child is airway is not maintainable even you see at present the airway looks clear but when it is u there is a high chance of aspiration because once it becomes u what will happen is that normal airway reflexes will get abolished so there is a high chance that the child will aspirate so that is the most important thing that you need to think for now what are the abnormal things that you need to look for these are the normal things that i said what are the abnormal things abnormal things you can have a gurgling sound why you have a gurgling sound because of 
secretions. So, because of secretions, you can have a gurgling sound. Then, what is the next thing you can have? You can have a strider or noisy breathing. Strider or noisy breathing. So, why there is a strider or a noisy breathing? Because of an upper airway obstruction. Upper airway obstruction. See, strider is for your upper airway and wheeze is for your lower airway. So, when you hear a wheeze, there is a lower airway obstruction. So, you need to remember this. So, usually wheeze will be able to auscultate. Sometimes wheeze you will be able to see audi audible wheeze also. You might get without using stethoscope also. But remember that noisy breathing is called a strider. Usually, it will happen in an upper airway obstruction. So, the reason for upper airway obstruction in a child, what are the common reasons for an upper airway obstruction? One is foreign body secretions. You can have epiglottitis. All those things, croup, laryngotracheobronchitis. So, these are all, we will discuss that when we discuss the respiratory issue. So, these are the common things that you need to understand. And also, you need to make sure that if the patient is in VPU status, that is verbal or painful or unresponsive status, there is a problem that the airway is under threat. So, maybe verbal response, at present it is okay, but pain and unresponsive, definitely the airway is under threat. So, these are the questions that you need to have. And one more important thing, what is written? You should have continuous assessment. They have written it through transport. This is basically for EMS system they have put while the patient you are transporting in the ambulance. But wherever be the child, you have to have a continuous assessment. Throughout the course, when the child is with you, you are saying that airway is patent right now. But maybe after 2 or 3 minutes, it can become uh, obstructed. So, you have to have a through and through opening up assessment of your airway breathing and circulation. That is very, very important. So, these are the things that you need to look in for airway. And what is the thing that you need to remember? You have to make sure that whether the airway is clear and maintainable. And if the patient is unresponsive, definitely it is not maintainable. And what are the abnormal things that you can have? You can have gurgling sound, strider, and you can have or noisy breathing. And if the pa patient is having an unresponsive vital signs, unresponsive vital signs in the sense, not unresponsive vital signs, uh, other than alert, verbal response, painful response, and unresponsive victim, you need to take care of that. The problem, there is an issue with the airway. The airway can have an issue. Now coming to breathing. So, already we have discussed what are the respiratory rate. Very important, you should know the respiratory rate. And what is the type of breathing? What is the type of breathing, whether the accessory muscles are being used, whether it is abdominal thoracic muscles they are using, all those things you need to have. Normally, when we breathe, we use little bit of abdominal muscle, little bit. But when the patient is very, very tachypneic, they will use more of accessory muscles of respiration. So, you have to see what is the respiratory rate, very important. We have to see what is the type of breathing the child is doing right now. And most importantly, what else you have to see whether there is any evidence of cyanosis. So, there is evidence of cyanosis. Next thing what you have to see is the what is the saturation of the child. What is the SpO2 of the child. So, what is the target SpO2? We wanted it above 94 to 95. At least 94 to 95 percentage above should be maintained. So, that is again that is very very important that you need to look in for and you need to auscultate. So, these things respiratory rate, type of breathing, cyanosis, type with accessory muscles usage that you can remember. And you have to look for any, yesterday we have already discussed any indrawing or retractions, any indrawing or retractions. That is the next thing that you need to look in for. Then what all things you need to auscultate the child. You need to auscultate the child and you need to look for any V's or V's. That is the very most important thing. You have to look for any rails that is otherwise called as crepitations. Crepitation, rails, crepitation, everything occurs as a part of your pneumonia, pulmonary demand, all those things. You have to auscultate and see whether there is any rails or any of these things are there. So, these are the abnormal things that you have to look. What is the normal thing? The patient will be quite stable. The respiratory rate is normal. Saturation is maintained and the child is able to breathe normally. So, that is a normal thing what we anticipate. Anything other than this is abnormal. So, the, what are the things that you need to look in for? So, we will just go through here again. Presence of retractions. Yesterday, we have already discussed. Nasal flaring. Yes, we have discussed yesterday. Strider. Again, they can have strider. Then grunting or gasping. Grunting means it's actually sort of an uh, uh, very, the child is very much in respiratory distress. The child is suffering, having very much difficulty in breathing and you are producing some noise during breathing also. So, that is what was called grunting. So, grunting is similarly to an, you are a, a severe respiratory distress, you can call it as grunting. So, grunting, gasping. Again, we have discussed gasping. What is gasping? It is jaw breathing and respiratory rate. That is tachypnea and cyanosis. So, these are the abnormal things. What is the normal thing? What we anticipate? The patient is easy, quiet respiration. 
respiratory rate with the normal rate and no cyanosis. So these are the abnormal things that we are need to look in for. So we will just conclude what are the abnormal signs. We will do it once again. What, uh, we will just discuss it once again. So breathing. Most importantly, first thing what you have to do, whether it is normal or whether it is abnormal. So these are the things that you should know, whether normal or abnormal. So in abnormal, normal, what will be that the child will be quiet. The respiratory rate is normal. Saturation is normal. And what is the next thing? And the child is, there is no cyanosis. Okay. Abnormal, what all things? One, respiratory rate, tachypneic. Second one, SpO2, you can take SpO2. Then accessory muscles and chest in drawing. Then grunting, grasping, type of breathing the child is having, grunting or gasping. <coughs> Any additional sound like strider, wheeze. Then color of the child, color cyanosis is there or not. So these are the abnormal things that you can have and also I told you you have to look for any rails, rails or crepitations. So these are the problems that you can anticipate in B. So respiratory rate when the child can have an increased respiratory rate, pneumonia, simple example is pneumonia, a lower respiratory tract infection. Pneumonia, SpO2, again it can be low in pneumonia, cardiac failure and all those things, low SpO2. Accessory muscle, the child is going for an impending respiratory failure, impending respiratory assets, they, they will be using this accessory muscles of respiration. Grinding or gasping, again before respiratory arrest, the child will have. Strider, as I told, it is in the upper respiratory, wheeze is in the lower respiratory. Color of the child, cyanosis, why the child is having cyanosis, it can be due to two problems, whether the child is having an already a cyanotic heart disease. The child can have a congenital cyanotic heart disease. Because of that, the child is cyanose or there is hypoxia secondary to pneumonia due to respiratory failure. So, next thing, rails and crepitation. Where all you can get rails and crepitation? Again, pneumonia and cardiac failure. So, these are the different abnormal things that you need to look in for a child that is in assessment during your B. So, what you have to remember is that it is not pediatric assessment triangle. What we have done? Pediatric assessment triangle, we have made a general impression and an initial impression. From that, we are going into a detailed assessment. They are told, I just told you to look for the respiratory rate, whether the child is tachypneic or not. What I am telling you, you have to check the respiratory rate, check the saturation. And if the saturation is low, you need to put the child on a face mask. So that is all important things that you need to remember. So you have to detail evaluate. We, there, there we didn't auscultate. Here we need to auscultate and, and see whether the child is having any crepitations or not. <clears throat> now coming to the next thing, C. In circulation, what all things you need to do? The most important thing is that the decision whether the child need an IV or an IU access. So that is very, very important. You feel any of this child is sick looking in your initial impression itself, go ahead and get and secure an IV access. The child is stable enough, doesn't child is walking comfortably sitting in mother's lap, don't do this. Don't, there is no need of any IV cannula. So that is one important thing that you need to remember. No need of any IV cannula. So in circulation, the most important thing that you need to remember, whether the child needs an IV or an IO access. And the next important thing that you need to remember is that, how to assess the circulatory status. So circulatory status, we have already said, you should know what is the normal heart rate for that age groups. So it is difficult for us to remember for all the age groups. So what you can have, you can have a chart like this. Stick in your emergency room or wherever the child is there. You can have this and you can see what are the normal respiratory rate, normal pulse rate and lower limit of systolic blood pressure. That is why I have already told you. 70 plus age into 2 formula you can use. So but the rest all these things you should have a clear uh, idea regarding what is normal, what is abnormal. So in tachycardia algorithm I said above 180, above 220. But that is mean that is again that is you have to mention that it is very very significant tachycardia. But here maybe 120, 130 itself is a tachycardia for that child. So for each age group you should be very clear what is the rate. But you cannot remember all these rates. So what you can do is that as age advances the heart rate comes down. So that is one thing that you can remember. So that for a newborn 100 to 160 may be normal. But for a uh, toddler that is who is walking around 90 to 150 will be the normal heart rate. So depending upon the age group, you have to decide what is normal, what is abnormal heart rate. So that is very important that you need to understand. Okay. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> in circulation, 
what are the three parameters that you need to assess one is the heart rate second is the blood pressure and third one is the capillary refilling time so capillary refilling time is just you need to squeeze over the child's nail bed and you need to just release it if the capillary refilling time is less than two seconds then the child is having good perfusion so that is the three things that you need to look for heart rate of the child blood pressure of the child and capillary refilling Ca uh, blood pressure of the child what all things can happen you can happen hypotension hypertension and normal blood pressure heart rate aki brady and normal heart rate and crt can be low normal or these are the two things low that is less than two seconds or abnormal about two seconds so these are the three things that you need to look in for in your circulation so what all uh, whenever you have a child with hypotension that i will discuss again how to approach a child with hypotension we can there is something called as compensated shock there is something called as a hypovolemic shock there are different uh, terminologies that you need to understand but basically you remember that you have to look for pulse heart rate you have to look for the blood pressure and you have to look for the capillary refilling time hypotension definitely the pulse rate will be high and heart rate uh, and the blood pressure will be low and capillary refill will get prolonged so these are the things that you need to remember and so we have done with your a b and c now coming to d disability the most important thing that you need to remember is that you need to do your avpu scoring gcs is what we usually does for the adult but gcs to do in a children is difficult so just do the avpu scoring system whether the child is alert verbally responsive painful only responding to painful stimuli or unresponsive and in d you have to look for extremities you have to look for extremities most importantly what you have to see is that whether the child is having any temperature the child is febrile or not one important thing that you need to you have to check the temperature if not done the next thing you have to look for any rashes because viral exanthematous fever is very common in a child in disability usually if the child is unresponsive or the child is sick looking you can look for a grbs but otherwise playful active child don't do a grbs why you want to prick the child but the child is unresponsive or decreased drowsy or there is hypotension the child has come with multiple episode of diarrhea you suspect hypoglycemia at that time you check for a grbs glucose random blood sugar otherwise routine pricking is not needed so these are the bare minimum things that you need to look in disability and extremities you have to look for the temperature of the child and you have to look for any visible rashes anything is there for the child so a v p u scoring that is what you have to do in disability so once you do this a b c d e you find some problems okay so what i have said is that you have assessing it so what next thing what you can do you know if you find some problem you have to treat that also right you cannot just leave the patient alone there if you are finding some problem you have to treat that if there is a gurgling sound you need to do the suction if there is a wheeze you need to give nebulization if there is the child is having fever you need to treat the fever if there is hypoxia you need to supplement with the oxygen so all those things whatever there is a problem that you are seeing you have to correct then and there itself that is what we normally does we doesn't wait for our things to go happen i have done your a b c d e so a there was a problem oh okay now you give oxygen this is not the way what we do when we connect the water itself when we see hypoxia we give oxygen simultaneously when we auscultate we find this we treat with nebulizations immediately so that is a pattern that you need to remember so whenever there is a problem you have to identify and treat identify and treat so you have a problem you identify and you have to treat that problem also so you identify by auscultating there is a wheeze so you have identified there is a wheeze and you have to treat with duodenal nebulization or salbutamol nebulization you identified that this child is having hypotension so what you have to do you have to put an iv line what we have already said iv line then what you have to start you have to start him on fluids so how much fluid that we will discuss in the hypotension discussion so what to treat that hypotension we will discuss so this is the general thing that you need to remember so now we have done the primary assessment so primary assessment again you remember that it is a continuous process so you have to whenever the child one step to other step you are giving you have to continuously evaluate the child again and again so once you does the abcd again after this you wanted some investigations for example you wanted a blood gas so very rarely you need a blood gas for a child for example the child is significantly hypoxic and you are planning the child is going to respiratory arrest you wanted to know what are the problems that child is anticipating you can take an maybe a blood gas as i told a grbs you needed the glucose random blood sugar and next thing what you wanted maybe an ecg you are seeing a tachycardia you think that the child is having an unstable tachycardia at that time you can ask for an ecg maybe a chest x ray so that is called as adjuncts to your primary survey what are the adjunct things that you need to add to your primary assessment so small small these investigations that you need to 
take that all depends upon the stability of the child if you want an x-ray you can't ask the child to go to the x-ray room and get an x-ray you have to ask them to come down and do a portable x-ray these things you need to remember and these are the most important parts of your primary assessment so primary assessment what we have done we have a sick looking child we have the, the child has come to you we have seen the child is responding or not responding the child is unresponsive we go straight away to the bls algorithm the child is responding otherwise there is a palpable pulse and breathing well we go for the initial impression with pat assessment triangle appearance of the child color of the child and breathing of the child we will go through and we will understand whether the child is having any problem with breathing or whether there is a circulatory issue from there we will go to the primary assessment so primary before primary assessment i told you if the child is sick looking connect to the monitor connect to the cardiac monitor spu2 and all those things if needed ask your team to put an iv access immediately as early as possible and if there is hypoxia because obviously you are seeing the child is cyanosed no need to wait for spu2 to get 50 percentage to start oxygen if the child is cyanosed you straight away start oxygen so these things three things you keep in your mind then you start with your airway breathing circulation disability and extremities so a what all things we need to assess abnormal and normal things b what all normal and abnormal things in circulation three parameters heart rate blood pressure and capillary refilling time and in disability part you have to look for your avpu scoring and grbs if needed and you are suspecting a head injury you can check for the pupillary size also so you can check for raised icp and all you can check for the pupillary size whether the pupils are symmetrical or asymmetrical then exposure of the child you have to look for extremities and you have to look for any rash what is the temperature if the child is febrile or not so these are the parameters that you need to understand okay thank you